Hello there. Well, there are so many walking paths and trails around Wales, of course, you really are spoilt for choice. But if you're looking for something a little bit different, and if you are interested in learning about the rich and diverse history of one particular part of Wales, well, look no further than the town of Pontar de Lice on the outskirts of Swansea. Now, this part of the country, of course, is associated with world-renowned beaches and as a popular tourist destination. But come away from the coastline to rural Swansea and you'll find a nice surprise and you don't have to be an experienced walker to enjoy it. So Croeso, welcome to the Ponta de Lice Heritage Trail. So starting at the Ponta de Lice Gatestone Monument, built to mark the Rebecca Riots in 1843, this easy four-mile trail takes walkers through the town of Ponta de Lice and through 14 centuries of history. And very soon you'll need to turn at the Farmer's Arms, which held such an important role in the riots, and head towards Coidbach Park. The park includes a beautiful woodland with 47 different species of trees, housing 31 species of birds, and it's a perfect place to walk the dog, play some football or rugby, and to enjoy the surroundings with all the family. It's under the watchful eye of the friends of Coidbach Park who work tirelessly to preserve its natural beauty for visitors. the park for a while you'll be walking towards and through another kind of landscape. The Lucha River cuts through marshes and reeds full of wildflowers and bird life and is a truly wonderful part of this trail. And then, unexpectedly, you'll reach one of the oldest religious sites in the whole of Wales, the Old Church on the Marsh. Dating back to the 7th century, the marsh was part of a busy Middle Ages pathway to St David's in Pembrokeshire. The 12th century church is now at the National History Museum at St Fagans, but you can still walk around this graveyard. This headstone marks, in an ancient and distinctive Welsh script, the grave of Gwilym Hopkin, who was very well regarded and may well have been a participant in the Rebecca Riots. The church is dedicated to St Tylo, a contemporary of St David and one-time challenger for the title of Patron Saint of Wales. It's worth taking your time exploring this little graveyard, enjoy the views, but you'd never think that the M4 is just over there. The motorway could be a million miles away from here, however, as I head back through the marshes, back to the park and towards the town again. I hope you have better legs than mine as I walk through another wooded area and head for the main road. I walk up the hill and reach yet another reminder of the Rebecca Riots. Now this trail is steeped in history and this stone, the Bolgoid Gate Stone, is very close to the Bolgoid Gate, the destruction of which marks the start of the Rebecca Riot in Ponte de Lice on the 6th of July 1843. It's also very close to the Fountain Inn and it's said that Elizabeth Lewis, the wife-to-be of Daniel Lewis, the leader of the Rebecca Riots, watched from an upstairs window as her husband-to-be led the attack on the toll gate.
and it's not long before I come to Gopper Chapel on the back road from the Fountain Inn. And this is where Daniel and Elizabeth Lewis are buried, again marked with that unique and distinctive Welsh script on their headstone, and the romance within the Dylan Thomas story, Rebecca's Daughters, is rumoured to be based on this relationship. The Heritage Trail follows in the footsteps of several Welsh figures and I'm meeting the Reverend John Walters to tell me about a connection between walking in this area and one of Ponte de Lice's most famous residents. So John, tell me about this gentleman. Edward Thomas, one of the most influential figures on modern English poetry. He was killed in the First World War in 1917. And although he was born in South London and lived in England for most of his life and wrote extensively about walking in England, we know too that he had friends and family in Ponta de Lice, and he spent several summers here, weeks at a time, walking the hills, walking down the marsh. He even mentions the old church on the marsh in one of his writings, referring to a little desolate white church and white-walled graveyard. So there's obviously fantastic walking in this part of the world, but there's so much history here as well, isn't there? I think in Ponta de Lice you can trace pretty much the history of Wales. Yeah. You can see the pre-industry, the prehistoric times, and you can come up to industry and post-industrial Wales as well. And I think thinking of somebody like Edward Thomas, who was here at a very important time, at the end of the Victorian age, where he could see the growth of industry and how this quiet um, agricultural village was now being turned into, in his own words, an industrial town, a hell fully equipped. He uses those words referring yeah. to Ponta de Lice. Ponta de Lice, therefore, is a town packed with all the classic ingredients of a rich Welsh heritage. Poetry, industry, religion and rebellion. Well, that really was a very pleasant little walk and I'm sure you'll be very surprised with the amount of Welsh history associated with this area. So when you come to Swansea Bay, Mumbles and Gower and you have to come, bring your bathing suit of course, but bring your walking boots too. Full valve. Swansea Bay is well loved and made up of five unique areas. Swansea, Mumbles, Gower, Rural Swansea and Avon and the Vale of Neath. So if you'd like to know more about Swansea Bay and the Ponte de Lice Heritage Trail, then go to visitswanseabay.com forward slash walking and enjoy it.